name is Julia and I am an incoming first year medical student and today I'm going to go through a full application review of my AMCAS application. If you don't already know, AMCAS is the application service used to apply exclusively to MD programs in the United States. I applied in 2019. I was a, finishing up my junior year of undergrad so I'm a very traditional student going straight through and I will be attending medical school starting in less than two weeks, which is crazy. So I just wanted to go through and kind of look at my application, explain what I wrote about, what I did, and kind of show you how I approached the application. Hopefully this is helpful for those of you who are planning to apply or currently in the application process to kind of see what I did and how it worked out for me. So um, the first page of this super long packet is essentially just like your information and the date that it was done. Um, I submitted on May 30th at 9.57 a.m. I think we could submit it at like 9.30. I had it ready. I started my application the day that it opened. Obviously you don't have to submit it on the first day, but the earlier you get it in the better. I just wanted it to be like behind me. So I submitted at 9.57 a.m. the first day I could submit. It was processed by the 5th of June. So it takes a while to process your impress application. And the earlier you submit, the better chance you have of it getting processed quickly. So mine was like five, six days or so before it was processed. So definitely advantage of submitting early. And then it starts your academic record. So for me, I took a few classes in high school and for college credit and then most of my credits were from one university i did take one class at community college um and i can go more in depth about how i figured out my classes and everything um one big piece of advice i have for this part of the application is to organize it all early because you have to actually manually enter every class you've taken how many hours it was for the grade you received um so that it can calculate um the AMCAS version of your GPA and I initially just went off of what I had on one transcript so I was just looking at my transcript from a university that I was getting my degree from and that's how I filled it out and then towards the end I started to worry and I was like you know my university that I went to for undergrad didn't do like A minuses or anything and I had some transfer credit and I was like you know I better check and make sure I got the grades that I think I got in those classes to um, find out the morning that I had to submit that I actually had gotten an A minus in two classes that I took in high school because my high school was on a seven point grading scale instead of a 10 point grading scale. And the way the whole thing is displayed on the transcript that I got from the university, it shows an A minus. This did not show in my uh, undergraduate in institution, so it did not affect my undergraduate GPA. I will say right now, since we're already going through this, I did get a 4.0 in undergrad from my university that I attended. This is definitely not necessary to get into medical school. Um, it was just a standard that I wanted to hold myself to. Um, it helped keep me really motivated and it was just something I worked towards. But I actually found out the day that I submitted that my GPA would not show up as a 4.0 according to AMCAS because of these transfer credits. Again, it did not affect my application at all, but it was kind of like jarring and also it would have stalled my application had I entered it incorrectly. So they're gonna need transcripts from all of these schools anyway. So go ahead and send yourself a copy. If you can find an informal copy, just so you can check and make sure everything's correct. I took essentially all of the basic science prereqs that you would think of, so O-chem, bio-chem. Um, I took physiology, I took genetics, I took cell bio. Um, and I'll talk maybe in another video about how I structured my class schedule for pre-med, but essentially I took all the typical prereqs. I was a biology major, so I had a very, very traditional route through undergrad, which I actually think was kind of a disadvantage to me when it came to the application process. Um, I actually did not take anatomy, which I know is different for a lot of people at different schools, but where I went to undergrad, they actually did not let the pre-med students take anatomy. So I will be experiencing it for the first time in a couple of weeks which is very scary. <laughs> um, but some classes that I did take that I really loved and I would recommend. Histology, I think was absolutely incredible. Also, social psychology, if you have a class that's similar to that at your university is really great for the MCAT psych social section. Um, that was actually my highest scoring section on my MCAT and I would attribute it to that class. Additional, I took some humanities classes. I was in the honors college, so I had some honors classes on there. But essentially, you enter all of your classes 
and all of your grades in and it takes forever and that's a huge part of the application. So my GPA showed up as a 398 for my science GPA and a 397 for my overall GPA. Then it goes on to your MCAT scores. I took the MCAT one time. I took it in January of my junior year. My scores are on here. I'm not going to release my exact scores as of right now. I it multiple times, so it'll all show up. If you plan to take it again, it'll show up on there as well. And then we get into the experiences. Essentially, you're gonna have 15 slots to talk about your experiences that you've done that are important to you, whether they be medical, uh, non-medical, volunteering, um, just hobbies, anything. So there are 15 slots and you have to kind of pick those 15 slots. So when I was doing this, I started deciding on those a couple months in advance, just kind of generally. So the first one on here is my volunteer medical assistant position I did at a free clinic. I logged about 24 hours for that. And I just kind of discussed what I do and the fact that I plan to continue doing it and what I learned during the experience. And that was kind of how I structured all of my responses. Um, I mentioned this in another video, but I actually had kept a spreadsheet of all of my experiences and the contact information for the people I worked with and the hours I had. That made this process go so much faster because I was really just plugging things in and writing essays. This one was my position as an undergrad research assistant. This I think is important if you're doing research as an undergrad, they wanna know that you actually know what you're doing. I made sure to choose a research project that I was actively involved in. So when I wrote this section, I really talked about the structure of how I got started in research and what my project was and what I planned to do with it. I logged 80 hours for that. And then I started in on shadowing. So I split my shadowing up in my application into clinical shadowing and surgical shadowing. This was because I wanted to list contact information for everyone, how many hours I had for everything and what it was. So I talked about my surgical shadowing. I had shadowed a kidney transplant and a meniscus repair and a rotator cuff repair revision. So I listed the 13 total hours and I broke them down by specific activity and date range. Again, that Excel sheet was really helpful. I didn't talk in detail about anything I noticed in those experiences though, in these experience description sections. I just felt like it was more useful to describe who I was with and what I did and who to contact if they have questions. This one is a low income clinic volunteer and observer. And I logged 28 hours for this. And I really talked about in this one, yes, this is what I did, but I talked a lot about what I learned from being in a low income environment. The next one was me as a volunteer triage assistant at a homeless shelter, which I logged 20 hours for. This kind of talked about the fact that I had done the hands-on thing. And then I was a student brand ambassador for Kaplan. So I logged 525 hours for that. I think any work experience can be looked at in a very valuable way if you can show what you've learned from it. And that was how I viewed that section. The next one was my global medical brigade to Panama. This I actually listed as the most meaningful experience, meaning it got a second essay. So I logged 40 hours for this. In the description, I really just talked about who went to the clinics. I made sure to emphasize that we learned about how to go into underserved communities and help them rather than exploit them. And that's extremely important when you're talking about medical mission work or any sort of mission work. So I talked about how we learned about the rural and indigenous communities, which was asked about frequently in my interviews. Everyone wanted to know kind of what I did when I went and how ethical was it. As far as my most meaningful experience, when I had gone on that trip, there was a patient whose blood sugar came out over 600. They ended up transporting her in the van three hours to the nearest hospital. It was my first experience with someone who really had so little access to healthcare that things had just been going downhill for her for like many months. It showed me a lot about the importance of global health. And so that was kind of what I emphasized in my most meaningful experience. My next experience that I wrote about was being a hospice volunteer. I logged 32 hours for that by the end of my junior year. And the next one is my clinical shadowing experience. I think in total, this one was 109 hours. I listed all of the physicians and the specialties. Next one was the treasurer and service chair of a women's leadership and service organization. I logged a total of 192 hours for this. The next one was the publicity crew chair of a women's pre-med organization and I logged 24 hours for this. Okay, the next one is hobbies. 
hobbies I logged 800 hours for. This was something I actually had a hard time with because I got so focused on being pre-med and doing everything I was supposed to do. I let my hobbies fall behind a lot. I discussed um, my violin, which I started playing the violin when I was four. I wanted to be a dixie chick before I wanted to be a doctor. Now just a chick, love them. I actually should have talked about cooking because I love to cook and I left that out because I was so worried about being cliche. I just felt like I was very uninteresting. And again, I said I would bring up in another video what I would do differently, but I just didn't develop enough hobbies during undergrad and I wish I could talk about them more here. The next one is another most meaningful experience. I was the president of a club that facilitated blood drives on campus. I logged 720 hours for this, which could honestly be an undershoot. I spent so much time doing this. As far as the most meaningful experiences, I talked about recruiting the blood donors, which was a lot of work and kind of how that taught me to be persistent and make me a better leader, a forward thinker, those kinds of things. Next one was being an honors mentor, which I logged 32 hours for. Then I talked about my job as summer camp counselor. I'm the assistant director of a summer camp and an event coordinator. I've done this job forever, but I just logged my high school hours, which came out to 1,775 hours. I just kind of talked about how I became the assistant director when I was 15. As far as my most meaningful part of this, I just talked about how I learned to be patient and to listen because I work with kids who have no issues and kids that come from really troubled backgrounds, kids that have uh, medical issues, psychiatric issues, behavioral problems, and kind of how this taught me to listen and be patient and be creative in problem solving. The next is my personal statement, which I will make an entirely different video on because it was a whole process. But essentially, it's on here. I used almost all the characters. And I just talked about three different really vital moments in my life and how those relate back to my desire to want to be a doctor because I had trouble answering the question of why I want to be a doctor because it's just something that I've known since I decided I didn't want to be a Dixie chick. Then I have my rec letters. I had four rec letters, one from my boss at the summer camp, one from my committee. Um, if your school does committee interviews, they are incredible very important nail those if you have them they essentially write you a rec letter with a bunch of different phds and kind of recommending you from your home university but it went to every single school i applied to like i said i applied to 20 and one from the doctor at the low income clinic that i worked with i had one from my research professor and then i have my list of schools i can share this at some point if someone is interested i hadn't really thought about where i wanted to go previously i just wanted to get in and my MCAT score was higher than I expected, so I was not prepared. And I just kind of picked based on stats, and I think that may have hurt me a little bit. And I think I undershot in some situations. I just didn't know what I was doing. And that is my application. Applying to med school is a whole ordeal. And you get so much information from so many people, but I think the most important thing is being organized so that you can get the right information and showing who you are in this 17 page packet of stuff. I think that portraying who you are through the application is something that can really land you in interview with places that you fit with. I will say that every school I interviewed at, I did feel like I would fit well there if I ended up getting accepted there. And I largely attribute that to me being able to convey who I am in my application and the schools being able to match that with the kind of person I'm looking for. But looking back on this, there's so much that I would change, I think, in really conveying myself better through the application. But you know, this is what it is. This is what I did and it did end up getting me accepted. I'm like so excited to start medical school in a couple weeks. That was my application. That's what I did. So if you have any other video requests, ideas, questions, please comment down below, please subscribe. Um, I can't wait to start vlogging and sharing so much more information with you guys and just kind of finally getting going. It feels like this has taken forever between when I applied last June and now, um, between all the interviews and the stress. Um, something else I could definitely talk about is the process of being waitlisted um, for months, essentially. <laughs> and a lot of months where I thought this wasn't going to happen for me yet. So I'm just absolutely excited and I want to help everybody else as much as I can. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.